Hello folks, this is Hannibal with your medical team. Uh, I'm just going to make this, this is going to be a real short brief video. Uh, I just wanted to um, make a recommendation for something that you should put into your IFAC. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube of people recommending a lot of stuff. And, you know, I've been prepping for a lot of years. And I'm sure you all realize that I sure do. It gets really expensive. And if you listen to some of these guys, you'll have a $500 medical kit, which is fine if that's what you want to have, but I, you don't need that. Um, I'm all about um, stuff that's effective and works, but also stuff that saves money. And, you know, a lot of uh, commercial bandages and stuff tend to get a little pricey. Um, I've got some Israeli bandages, and I really like those, uh, but um, the price has really gone up on those. I bought some a few years ago. They were around $5. Now they're like 10 to 15 it seems like, when I go to look at them. And um, they're good to have, but I found these, and these are really good bandages, and I wanted to recommend these. Um, these are IDF, that's Israeli Defense Forces personal dressings. My understanding is that these are issued to every member of the IDF. Um, that's similar to when I was in the military, we um, didn't have IFACs, um, we all carried a dressing. And... We wore LBEs, load-bearing equipment, with um, suspenders. And on your left suspender, closest to your heart, you had a little pouch, and that's where you mounted your dressing. And it stayed there. So if you were out and one of your buddies was injured, you would go to him. You'd know where to get his dressing and apply his dressing to him. You saved your dressing for you uh, if you needed it. Um, that type of dressing, uh, I always heard them called battle dressings. Um, the official name for it, I think, is actually a Carlisle bandage, which comes from World War II. And this is a very similar design, but it's kind of a modern version of it. And uh, it's very small. If you look, I mean, you can fit this in the palm of your hand. And it's about the thickness. It's really about the thickness of a deck of playing cards. And similar in size to a deck of playing cards, but actually smaller even. And um, it's a vacuum pack dressing. Um, they've got um, Hebrew writing on it. Um, I've translated it. It's just the directions how to apply it. And one of the things it says on here is that it will hold 500 cc's or 500 milliliters of fluid. Um, just to give you a reference, that's this bottle of water. So it's a very small and compact, but that's because it's vacuum packed. It's sort of like a dried up kitchen sponge. It'll expand when it gets to fluid. And I'll be honest with you, if I dressed a wound and it bled this much, I would be slapping a tourniquet on there or I would be packing that wound. So it's certainly going to be adequate as a dressing. But um, they're a dark green package. And as I said, it's got Hebrew writing on the side to get an authentic one. I've never seen a knockoff of these, but I'm sure if they get popular, China will come up with something. Um, these are priced between three and four dollars, right in that range, uh, depending on how many you buy. Um, I bought two off of eBay when I first saw them, and with shipping from Israel, they were eight eighty-eight. So it was four dollars and forty-four cents a piece. I tried them, I liked it, and I bought some more. And I've always gotten better prices than that. The last ones I bought, when this just came in. I bought four of them, and they were $13 and change. So, you know, that comes out to $3 and change. So, uh, pretty inexpensive. So, um, I have these all over the place. I've got them in every one of my IFACs, in my vehicles. I've got them in my um, bag that I keep in my truck. I've got them in my uh, little uh, everyday carry bag that I carry, uh, my everyday carry gun in. Um, I've got them all over the place. And they are so small and easy, you can stick them in a shirt pocket and carry them around. Um, but enough talk about them. Let me see. Let me show it to you and, and how this works. Um, that's a close-up of the front. And of the back. And there's uh, tear notches. Which I don't think you're seeing in the light. But there's a tear notch there to tear it open. When you open these... There is no inner dress, or inner packaging really. So I know like some of the Israeli dressings and stuff, people like to tear open the inner packing or tear off the outer packing to throw it away to try to save space. But this is so compact, you don't want to do that with this. Then it's wrapped in paper. So you, when you take the initial dressing off and you unwrap this, it's going to be uh, wrapped in paper. 
I'm going to tear it open. Now, I know it doesn't look like this much because it's all compressed, but you got to kind of pull it apart. So as soon as you pull it and it starts coming apart, you'll see you'll have this gauze and there's a piece on each side of it. So so you pull the gauze from each side and then your dressing is in the middle and that's the pad there. And this is very similar to the battle dressings that we used when I was uh, in the military. And the red side is up and see it's got that red blot so you'll know which way to apply it. Let me get back over to my Mannequin. I didn't drag my whole mannequin out for this. Um, it's going to be such a short video, but like I said, when you open this, you you get the uh, gauze started from each side, and then you pull it open like this. And don't pull on this gauze too hard. The battle dressings that we used when I was in the army, this material was a heavy muslin, and it was made that way on purpose, so you could actually use these as tourniquets. Um, this one. You can't. It, that gauze is not that heavy. If you give, if you pull it too hard, you're going to rip this and pull it loose. Um, it's made for a dressing. But there is a lot of different ways you can apply this dressing. You can apply it to head wounds. You can apply it to the leg. You can apply it across the abdomen, um, into a, like a shoulder injury or an armpit. Uh, if you've got a sucking chest wound, you could take the wrapper and place it over to make a seal and then wrap the dressing over top of that. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in it, but just for the basic dressing, it's sterile. You take it and apply it to the arm, and then you wrap the gauze around, and you just you can pull it out. And you wrap it many times as you want to, and then when you're ready to tie it off, you want to tie the knot directly over top of the wound, and that way you're applying the pressure down. And once again, be cautious when you tie it. Don't get too carried away cranking on this, because you will break this. Um, you shouldn't need that much pressure, but you can you can tighten it snug. So you want to knot it, tie your knot there, and that's your dressing. If you need additional pressure on top of this, you could take, um, if you have like one of our first aid kits, one of the ones that I came up with, and recommend it if you have Coban in there, you could wrap this in Coban and that will give an extra layer of compression. Or if you have a SWAT type tourniquet or um, one of the uh, physical therapy exercise bands that I recommend getting and using as a uh, tourniquet, if you could get one of those, that would make a good way to put some extra compression on here. Another way that we were taught in the Army with our battle dressings if you've got like a, a concentrated wound in one area. So let's say we know we, we put the dressing there and it's a, let's say, gunshot wound. And, and it's right there. That's where you want the pressure. What you can do is you can tie a knot over it, then wrap it another time or two, and then pull that tight and then put another knot directly over top of it. And what that does is it forms that knot underneath those dressings and it's right at the spot where you need it. So then when you're cranking down, it's just putting additional pressure right on that spot to get the, a good tight pressure dressing there in that spot. And that's about it. It's a very simple, basic little dressing, but man, is it handy and versatile. And I mean, if there's interest in it, um, if I hear any interest, I might make another video going into... Uh, the different ways that you can uh, use this dressing for dressing different types of wounds. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's wherever you can get, uh, wherever your wound is, if you can just get this applied to it, then you can vary it the ways that you can use this dressing. It's very versatile and it's so small and easy to carry. So um, now, talked about the absorbency and they say that it'll absorb this much water. Um, I don't need it to absorb anything like that, like I said, but I just want to show you, it's so compact now, but it is very absorbent. So what I do is I got a bowl of water. I don't know how much is in there, two or 300 cc's. I'm not really concerned with it, but I just want to show you how it soaks it up. So I'm just going to set that down in there and give it a second.
and it's pretty much absorbed all of that water. So I'd say there was at least two or 300 cc's. And of course, it's, now it's completely saturated, but um, it, it held every bit of that. And you saw it took what? Less than five seconds to absorb every bit of that up. So, so it's just a really simple, inexpensive, but very effective dressing that I feel should be a part of your first aid kit. Um, let's say, you know, for... For the price of one Israeli dressing, which um, the uh, I don't know what else to call them. I think you know what I'm talking about. If not, I made a video about pressure dressings and I showed an Israeli dressing in action. But uh, for the price of one of those, you could get four of these and just throw them in your glove box. Um, throw it in your pocket if you're going out somewhere. If you're going hiking or something, it's really easy to put that in your pocket. Um, I've got one in my... Um, uh, bandolier that I wear with uh, magazines when I go out. Uh, just one of the little grenade pouches. I've got one in that and I've got a tourniquet in the other one. And for me, that's a, a very good little individual first aid kit to carry around with me. So um, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you're liking these videos, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you got any friends who are uh, patriots or preppers, you feel they can benefit from this, please uh, share with them. The more views I get, that just helps me a lot. Helps me, gives me the resources to make more of these. And I will keep making them. Um, and if you want to see me do another video on these, going into a little bit more in depth, um, different ways you can apply these dressings and stuff, just you know, shoot me an email. It's in my link. Or put a comment. Uh, I read them all. And i uh, be happy to do that. And thank you so much. Appreciate you all. God bless. Stay safe.